Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. It's such a pleasure. Well, I am really honored that you two flew out from the East Coast to the West Coast just to interview me. Yeah. I really am. I, I just have to tell you, this is not a line. I'm very touched. So I'll try to do well. We have no doubt you will. And, and we were excited at, and honored at uh -huh. the opportunity to be here well, with you. Well, thank you. Well, it's been a long time working it through. So thank you. Welcome to the West Coast. It's great to be here. And uh, we have such admiration and respect for you and what you've accomplished. Thank you. Uh, you really are a remarkable human being. And I think a lot of people, um, there's so much to learn from you. And I think people might put you into this category of, well, there's no way I can ever even tap into what he's doing in the world. And I, I really feel that we all have some sort of untapped potential and that we should be able to learn from each other and that hopefully we can learn from you um, and try to become better well, thank you. people it's in the again, process. again very kind. I will tell you, uh, I'm a living example of Mikol Melam Dahiskalti that I have learned from so many others because I figured out, you're ready? You're, this is going to blow your mind. <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> okay. I am convinced that I have spoken with, not to, with more people than any living person. 40 years as a talk show host, talking with people every day. That's a lot of people. And I regard my talk show, which is a national show, and it's three hours a day, uh, Monday to Friday, I regard that as my living human laboratory. I have learned from callers so much. Should I give you one example? Please. So I've, I've done an hour on happiness every week for 24 years. And I've written a book on happiness. Happiness is a serious problem. Well, I'm very touched that you, uh, that you know the title. Know the title and love the book. Yeah, I, it's an important book, if I'm allowed to say that. Because hap anyway, happiness is a very, very important subject. One of the reasons I love Chabad, by the way. It's a very big factor in my attitude toward Chabad. So a woman calls me, so I, I, did, I did this subject of what if you have a miserable child, which a lot of fine people do. And a woman calls me, I only remember that she had a southern accent, and she said, Dennis, uh, my 33-year-old daughter is just a miserable human being, and I'd like to tell you what I finally decided, what I concluded, and this is my attitude, I didn't break her, I can't fix her. And I thought that that was such wisdom, so much so that I have cited it in speeches around the world. It, it is brilliant. That's what parents should understand. By the way, it, you, A, you can't fix them, and the odds are overwhelming you didn't break them. Don't you think we're responsible for some of what? Some of, yeah, well you added the word some. Uh, uh, my own attitude is that, like so much of life, and you may not like this thinking it's not a religious concept, but I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it religiously. A lot of life is luck, and a lot of life is what we do. You, you get hit by a drunk driver, you didn't do it. That was bad luck. Now, you could say Hashem wanted it. Okay, that's not my view, uh, but I, I have no argument with that. I, it's not arguable against. But uh, I do believe that there, there is luck in life. And, and in other words, things that you are not, good luck as well as bad luck. I have, a, I have an immense amount of good luck. Exactly. I have incredible health. I mean, I, I work on it, but so what? You know, we were just talking about a fantastic man who, who we, we all know, uh, the three of us, who, who has Lou Gehrig's disease. That, that, you know, that is, I don't have it, I'm lucky. About children, I got a great story. Uh, tell me if I'm talking too long. You're not talking too long, but I do want to say that when I say good muzzle, I look at it that the muzzle is God. Okay, so then, all right, let, uh, let's get into that because it's it, it's a very important subject. I, I, but I, don't I do want to hear the that. story about yes. the, the. So, yeah. Uh, what, yeah, so I was going to tell you a story. What was it about again? Your, your muzzle thing and God uh, sidetracked my brain. 
at, about children? Oh yes. So I, I, whenever my parents would attend one of my speeches, and they lived in Brooklyn, then New Jersey, and I lived in, in L.A. At a, at a very early age. But whenever they would attend a speech of mine, let's say on the East Coast, or even even if they visit on the West, uh, I would announce to the audience that they were there. I, I, I like to give them that joy. They loved it. The people all applauded, and, and fine. So at one speech, after my speech, I was within earshot of my father, but he did not know that. He did not know where I was. There were a lot of people milling around about around me and around him. So I overheard some man say to him, oh, Mr. Prager, just want, you, you must have been some great father to produce a son like Dennis. And my father, totally straight-faced, looked at the guy and goes, actually, I'm very lucky. And I thought that that was a humble and beautiful answer. And I feel that about my two sons. I'm very lucky. Of course I contributed. But, but you know how many wonderful parents have, have miserable kids? So now to your thing, you, you say Hashem instead of Mazel. I, when I say Mazel, I, I'm referring right. to Hashem. Yeah. So, so what's your drunk driver theory? That God willed the drunk, drunk driver to hit the person? Well, I think the drunk driver has a choice if he wants to be drunk or not. Okay, so that, so that takes it out of God's hands. Well, I think that, yeah, it does take, and well, I think that God intended for that to happen. Where, who, the, who the actual emissary is to, to make that happen is the person's choice. Right. Now, by the way, I just, just so you'll know, my, my father, who served in World War II, two and a half years uh, on, a, on a ship in the Pacific, and very dangerous work. He was a, it was a transport and that's what the kamikaze uh, pilots tried to sink, those ships that my father was on. But he had a total belief that the day of your death is ordained by God. You could be on a ship in the Pacific fighting the Japanese, or you could be in your bathtub. You'll die. So he was very calm during the, for the, in the war. So I, I, I appreciate people who believe that, but that that's only the day of death. You believe do you believe everything that happens? Then where is our input? What happens, what God ordains is what's gonna happen, but we have a choice, first of all, in how we're gonna to react to the situation. And we also have a choice if we're gonna be that person to make someone else's story happen or not happen. You know what I mean? But our own story, we have a choice in how we're gonna re react to what God has given us. Yeah, that, that we, okay. So your reaction is in your hands. Yeah. So we do have free will. Yes. Okay. I think that's the free will in how we react to what we're uh, given. Uh, okay, I hear you. All right, I was just curious. I, I don't. How do you I, feel about that? What, what do you think? No, about no, that? I, 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 I think that God, God has made the world. God knows every one of us. I believe that there is reward and punishment uh, that God ordains. I'm big, in fact, Olam Haba, hereafter is the basis of my my sanity because there's so much su unjust suffering on earth there has to be a hereafter if god is good it's a big big thing that i write about and talk about a lot however uh you know like with the holocaust god allowed hitler and the germans to do what they did i think god spends a lot of time crying says in the Torah, God was sad to his heart when he saw how bad people were to each other and then he brought the flood. Right. I, I do believe God gets sad. I, I, I used to take that pasuk, that verse, as, uh, as you know, the, the Torah, uh, the Torah speaks in the language of human beings. Uh, but so that it was a metaphor, but I, I'm not sure it's a metaphor now. I think God gets sad. I heard one rabbi ask once, it was very powerful, to to a group I, w I was, I, had in, I was the introducer of this rabbi. And I, of course I sat for the speech. So he looked at the group and he said, so who's the most tragic figure in the Bible? And people threw out all different names. 
And he goes, okay, here's my nominee, God. <laughs> uh, it was a very powerful statement. Who do you think is the most tragic oh, I, figure? Oh, I, I, I think that that's correct. I, I, God says every day, I accept the second, Vayar Hashem Kitov, right? That he, that, he did, he, that he did good that day. And then on the day he creates humans, Tov Ma'od. And then we screw it up. So whether we believe in, you know, that it's luck or that it's divinely, you know, um, or, it's, or that it's God, there's still a question of what do we do like as human with our limited capacity. So as parents, you mentioned your father said, I'm lucky. Um, he must have done something to have a son who has, you know, grown up to become a mensch and, you know, check all the boxes. So what's, I guess, what's our... Avoda as parents, what? Oh, uh, well, there are two. There are two separate questions, at least in my brain. So, I learned a lot in my parents' home. There is no question, especially seriousness about Judaism and seriousness about ethics, and I give them great credit. But the the truth is, they didn't know where I came from, and I don't know where I came. From. When I was in high school, I did no homework for four years. You know what I did? I corresponded with radio stations around the world, listening on shortwave radio. I went to Manhattan from Brooklyn every day, except Shabbos and Sunday, uh, uh, to uh, 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 go to concerts. I went to the New York Philharmonic Library to read symphonic scores, and I learned, how, I taught myself how to conduct. I conducted a Haydn symphony at the Disney Concert Hall three years ago. I, I've been conducting all of my life, and I started to teach myself Russian. Why okay? Russian? Because it was the Cold War enemy, and I wanted to understand them. I, I, I'm fascinated by, by bad people. I'm more fascinated by good people, but that's another subject. It's good to be fascinated by good people. It's good to be fascinated, period. <laughs> yeah. People are bored out of their minds. Right. It's a big problem in our society. But they're not, they knew at the time. We, what, what kind of kid teaches himself symphonic scores in high school? So they knew that you were skipping they, they, school? They, they, sorry? Did they know that you were not studying or doing, or doing homework? Well, yes. In fact, uh, it came to a crisis when I was 14. It was, it was a very, it was a sad scene the a couple of years leading up to that age. And finally, my older brother, who was a nachas machine for my parents, went to Columbia he, at the Yeshiva High School. He was the captain of the basketball team, president of the school body, uh, valedictorian. And then he went to Columbia, then he went to Harvard Medical School. He, he talked about checking boxes. And, and so he said to them, there is only one thing you can do for Dennis. Leave him alone. And to their credit, from that day on, they never asked me if I had homework. They even said I could sign my report card with their name. Wow. They, and, and I thrived. Being left alone, I thrived. Interesting, because we had that question for you. What's the balance? You know, should parent like there's a bit of discipline missing. No, no, I don't. Every yep. kid has to be educated in his own way. There are kids if you leave them alone, they'll end up in the street. There, there are kids if you bug them, they'll go out of their minds. I was in the latter category. It, it, it it's a look. It's a very hard job to be a parent. The hardest job. It is the hardest job. That is why so many people don't want to do it in, in this generation. They don't want to do anything hard. They don't want to get married. That's hard too. If it's hard, I don't want to do it. They're lost. I mean, I, don't start me. On this generation, my heart breaks for them. They don't even know if they're a boy or a girl. Uh, are you aware of how bad it is? Because you live you know, in, in a very uh, healthier world living in the Chabad world. But we were aware, and the Chabad world is out there. We're out there in the world, and we see what's Well, you're the, you're the Orthodox Jews who are out there. Right. Yeah, I got a lot of thoughts on you. You'll, you'll ask when you're ready. We're ready. We're ready. <laughs> okay, so I'm in love with Chabad. That's good to know. 
I can give you a lot of reasons, and it's um, it's very interesting. I speak for Chabad around the world. If I I was just I gave a speech re, a few months ago in Denmark, and so I, I called the Copenhagen uh, Chabad rabbi, and they, they all know me. I'm very touched, and and uh, I, I said, "Hi, this is Dennis Prager. Oh, you in Copenhagen? Yeah, can you speak?" And so that's what I do. I saw so Friday night, I go to their meal and I give a talk. And uh, I love it and they love it. And uh, it, why do I love Chabad? So I love Chabad. First of all, my biggest problem, I grew up Orthodox. And I'm Orthodox to this day with a small o. I'm not as halachic as I was. But I, my hashkafa, my outlook is orthodox. God gave the Torah. That's my whole basis in life. God is the author of the Torah. Everything else is secondary to me. So anyway, uh, I, 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 I. You mean the all thing, the all the mafashim, all that? No, no, the Torah. Mm-hmm. Period. Uh, I, we can get into that. Anyway, the mafashim often disagree with one another, so. Uh, it's an issue. But anyway, so uh, I, the thing that troubled me most in my Frum upbringing was the insularity of the Frum community. It drove me crazy. I, I tell people I was, so, I was so anxious to meet a non-Jew or a non-Orthodox Jew that I interviewed the mailman whenever I saw him come to the house. Oh, wow. He was the only non-Jew <laughs> in my life. Because I, you know, Brooklyn Frum, it's, it, I mean, it's not right-wing Frum, but it is, it's more and more modern Orthodox, but I went to a Stiebel, so that was... Which, where did you grow up? Where was this? Uh, fla- well, really, uh, M- M- Marine Park, Flatbush. It, it, it's not exactly Flatbush. It's it, it's, uh, it was King's Highway in Ostrand Avenue, where the Kingsway Jewish Center is to this day. My father was the president of the shul. So uh, it drove me nuts, and it does to this day, because what did God choose us for? We're a tiny, tiny people. So did he choose us to stay insular, or to, did he choose us to touch the world? And do and you know who touches the world? Jews who were alienated from Judaism. Karl Marx, I know, he, I know he was baptized and so on. The grandson of two Orthodox rabbis. Right. And Leon Trotsky. And George Soros. I, I mean, the, 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 the Jew, Betty Friedan. And I'm not putting her in the category of Marx and so on, although she, she leaned that way. I mean, the irony is the Jews who touch the world don't give a damn about Judaism, and the Jews who give a damn about Judaism don't touch the world. This has been my mm-hmm. lament all of my life. You, so Chabad is the Orthodox community that wants to go into the world. I mean, that there, I visited Chabad of Cambodia. I mean, th- that's, that's a big deal. A, a guy should leave his from world and be in Cambodia? You, that's a, an astonishing thing. And I was in Chabad of Japan, and I've been Chabad, I, tr- I make it, try to make, cause I, I've been to 130 countries, wow. and I try to visit Chabad whenever I can. So uh, you, you're not insular. You're comfortable with non-Orthodox Jews. You're comfortable with non-Jews. That was not the case for much of Orthodox history. Right. Have you met the Lubavitcher Rebbe? So this is a deep regret in my life. I was invited to meet the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Rabbi Kunin, who is still, thank God, with us, and we know each other 40 years. I used to bring him to this Jewish Institute that I ran in California to speak. So he said, you know, uh, I could set up a meeting with you and the Rebbe. So you have to know two things. One. I did not know of Chabad growing up. The Orthodox world was very, certainly then, was very segmented. You knew your community, he knew his community. When was, what what year are you talking about? When I grew up? Oh, so, so. Or when Rabbi Kunin wanted to. Oh, so Rabbi Kunin would have said this in the 70s. Okay. Uh, Yes, when I was in my 20s. So, so he, uh, and he said, and I thought 
and it was stupid. I, 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 it's a deep regret. What can I say? But the, I, 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 Eve, I too have made stupid decisions, and I thought, you know, for a Chabad Chassid to meet the Rebbe is the greatest possible thing they could have in their life. I'm not Chabad. My meeting with the Rebbe will take away time from a Chabad Chassid meeting with the Rebbe. Wow, that's the way you looked at it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it, there's a nobility to it, but it's also stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you can be noble and stupid You're at the same right. time. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it... Uh, but you know what? The Rebbe would be very proud in, in how you're talking right now. So I'm saying... No, well, thank you. That's very sweet. The but fact I, that you I really appreciate... did think that. I thought... It could, first of all, it didn't mean to me... The, it, Chabad didn't mean to me then what it came to mean to me later right. in my life. I, I, which is just it is what it is. There's nothing I can say. Uh, so that, that should be factored in. Certainly, had it been asked of me 20 years later, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have t gotten on a plane that day. Uh, by the way, it's also been a, a hurt me in one other way, aside from not having that, that, uh, that zechut, that, that honor, is that uh, I'm sure I would have spoken at one of the shluchim conventions, but you had to have met the Rebbe as one of the criteria to be the guest speaker. At, at the at the Shluchim convention, right? Interesting. Because a lot of Chabad rabbis would love me to speak, because I speak at so many of their local Chabads. Right. Well, yeah. you never know; you may be able to. But because um, I think there are speakers who have spoken who have not read. Oh the well, Rebbe. then I I hereby nominate myself. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that would be a great idea. Yes. But what I do want to tell you is that, for example, my children and Edith's children never got to meet the Rebbe but they still feel a strong connection to him. So you don't have to have met the oh, Rebbe. Oh, that's clear, of course. Well, I feel much stronger today than I did th than in any event. Yes, so, and you, if you go to the Ohel, you, you will have met the Rebbe. You can ask for yes, a blessing. Yes, no, I'm, I'm well aware. So, yes. you know, in, in a way, you have met the Rebbe, but not in oh, the way right. that you could no, have right. back then. Correct, correct. There was like, one... you can't ask me if I met the Rebbe and I go, yes, I've been yes, to the Yes, I know. I, I, that's <laughs> but I'm just, saying, I'm just saying for your regret is that yeah, you can yes, still have is, that it connection. Is, like I did what I did. I, but it, it, you asked the question. That's, yes. that's my story. Well, it's interesting to hear that someone like you has regrets. Like, I'm sure you have other regrets too throughout your lifetime. What do you do with regret? So when, when I make a mistake, I have a very good way good because I know that it's it's helped me phenomenally this is my attitude towards a mistake don't make it again that's really uh, that is it and it gives me great comfort I won't do this again and, and that 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 has been a tremendous source of, of strength and comfort to me mistakes are inevitable you're a human you'll make mistakes now, if you make big mistakes that have catastrophic results, it's it, it, you know it, it, it you know you, you uh, went to text and, and you hit the a bicyclist and they're dead. That's you know, a bad it's, one. Uh, yeah, you can't say, well, I won't do that again. I mean, you can say it, but it's not going to be a big help. You killed somebody. Uh, but I thank God I haven't made mistakes on on that Madriga. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on that level of, of mistake. But it does exist. Of course it yeah. exists, yes. But I, I look, uh, so he, here's an example, but I, 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 I didn't think of mistakes in this regard, interestingly. So I'm very open about my life. It's, what, I, I, I had a debate in my mind when I started radio 40 years ago. How open will I be about myself? Because it's not easy. You want to protect yourself, your privacy, etc. And what about the other other people also? Part of your story, part of you sharing about you, you'd be sharing about somebody else too. Well, that's right. And yeah. and, and so I I, alter, I opted to be open, and let the chips fall where they may. So so this is an example. I have two sons. My second son. Uh, his, his mother and I, she has passed away, uh, his mother and I uh, adopted uh, the day he was born in the state of Washington. I uh, 
and this is, I'll be interested to get your reaction actually. Uh, I have a view of blood which may not accord with yours. I don't care about blood. I care about values. I th and I am convinced the Torah agrees with me. Uh, the, the, I mean, I'm just trying to understand what that oh, means. Oh, I'll tell you. The blood connection of people, blood relatives, that doesn't mean anything to me. So it was one of the reasons it was so easy for me to adopt a child. I have no blood relationship to my second son. I do to my first son. It makes no difference to me. People ask me which one of your kids is adopted. My standard answer is I forget. It doesn't matter. By the way, I have a very interesting proof. So I used to do one hour a year. I can't believe I stopped doing this. I have to resume it. Out of nowhere, because I don't only talk about the news. I talk about everything in life. So it, it is my blood doesn't matter, values do. Values and love matter, not blood. Hour. I get a call. This is what I mean, the living laboratory of my radio show. So a call is, hi, Dennis. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a Jew in I don't remember what city. And uh, I agree with you on everything, but not this. And let me tell you why. My parents are Holocaust survivors. But mind you, by the way, 98% of my listeners are not Jewish because that 98% of the country isn't Jewish. Just, but, but, right. but Jews listen, too. So he, he uh, says, my parents are Holocaust survivors. I am their only child. So I am their only blood relative. Do you understand how for some people blood could be important? So I said, I'll tell you what. I'd like you to ask your parents this question. Yeah, right, right after we speak, I'd like you to call them up or the next time you see them and say, Mom and Dad, I have a question. Would you prefer a blood child who left Judaism or an adopted child who kept Judaism. And then the, the greatest moments in talk radio, it's quiet. I love, it's so dramatic when there's <laughs> silence on the line because it means I got to the person. And he goes, oh, you're right. right. Values are more important than blood. So wow. I have a question about that um, regarding family and how, um, you know, how much we should give our family members, or let's say our sisters, our brothers, um, more room to hurt us, or we give we give them, we're more forgiving, right, of our family because family is very important. So if someone I'm very close to in my family will hurt me, I'll say, you know what. Their family, family is important. Let's just figure out a way to make this work. Or even with husband and wife, although that's not blood related, but versus like a. By the way, it's a good example. The ultimate relationship isn't blood. Right. Husband and wife. Right, right. So people will, I feel, often overlook things with their family members that yeah. they wouldn't with someone they're very close to. Well, you, because you can divorce a friend, you can't divorce a sibling. I mean, theoretically, right. it happens, but... Well, you can pick your friends, you can't pick Well, that's the whole friends. point. Yeah. Look, I always tell, look, if you have to spend six months alone on an island, would you pick a relative or a friend? And you, it's a rhetorical question. Right. The vast majority of people would, would pick a friend. Right. And it's not a knock on your relatives. My relatives would pick a friend, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not right. Hurt. Right. I'm right. not hurt by that. Right, yeah. But yes, but there, there's a level of, of decency you should show to, to a family member for the sake of the family. It's, you know, Shalom Bayit is not just husband and wife. It's peace in the house, the house being the large family. But if you have a, a sibling who, who is, uh, to use a cliched term, toxic, I don't. I, I, I'm not sure you have an obligation to go out of your way to, to and drive yourself crazy. Uh, th they have they have chosen that way of life, or, or I don't mean that way of life. They have chosen that behavior. Right. And and and, and the, again, there's nothing you can do about it. There is a great great uh, prayer called the Serenity Prayer. It's it was, it was done by, by a Christian uh, clergyman. It's brilliant. And 
it is I, it is a one of one of the mottos of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh yeah, which I was going to tell you about my second son. I got distracted. Uh, I I personally have never uh, had the problem of addiction, but uh, I've learned from my callers there's more wisdom in AA than at Harvard. I mean that literally. I I, I literally I don't I don't mean that as a cute line. Because I would say to these people, where did you come up with that? Oh, AA, the big book, AA, 12-step program. So it goes something like this. I, I, have, a, I have a great memory for concepts and a lousy memory for lines. Uh, but <laughs> it's something to um, uh, give me the serenity to accept what I, can, what I cannot change. And the wisdom to know. The, the wisdom difference. to know the difference. And then, but there's a third element. To change the things I can. I yeah, think. that's right. To change the things I can. Thank right, you. That's right. right. And, and, and the, the wisdom, wisdom to, to know, know the, the difference. difference. If you have a relative, you need the wisdom to know, I, I can't change and there's nothing I can do. I'm not going to drive myself crazy just because it's a brother or sister. By the way, I don't think people, uh, to be really dramatic, I don't think people, and I, I have helped immense numbers of people with this attitude. They never heard it. People all say you're no you're no happier than your least happy child. That is a common statement. I hate that statement. Well, you happy you cannot else. let your your happiness be held hostage right. by, by your else. child. End of issue. You have to adopt that woman's attitude. I didn't mm -hmm. break her or didn't break him. I can't fix him. So my younger son, uh, the the one that I think your wire is falling. No, no, this oh. is... Uh, no, on your, I think on your, your tie. On your shirt. Oh, it you're just right. Kind of it is. Oh. <laughs> is that okay? Rick, we need you. <laughs> we that. Thank you. I don't know where it goes. We're going to fit hair. <laughs> okay. Hair, I see. Uh, I know why the wire got caught on my leg. So, uh, anyway, I'll continue while, yeah. while, 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 while we're doing this. So, I did not know this because, as I said, we adopted him uh, on the day he was born. So here, where do I put it? Go, come, come on in. We'll, we'll, we'll take a, a, a few <laughs> second break here for technical matters. Where was it on my tie? I know why I came off because it got okay. wrapped around my what knee. What did you say? We've been an hour and nineteen left. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So he, we adopted him the day he was born, and we did not know until years later that his, his birth mother was a meth addict and an alcoholic and drug addict, every, you, the, the, every, addict to every, every substance you could take. She, she'd been in, we found out later, she'd been in prison like six times or in jail. And uh, it, had, it, it affects a baby born to, to a, 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 a meth mother. So it, it acted itself out in it, 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 around the age of 12 and he became addicted and did so for almost 10 years. I would say 10 years. And it was a very painful 10 years. Uh, having, having said that, that it was a painful 10 years. Uh, I did not allow my, my happiness to be held hostage by my child. I, I, have, I have lived what I preach in this regard. It was a pain. I, 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 I lived it. I knew that I was pretty much helpless to do anything about it. And sure enough, one day, at about the age of 22, he calls me up. Uh, I, I, you must get me to some rehab place. I can't take this anymore. He had tried rehab before it didn't work, which is true for the vast majority. It doesn't work the first time. By the way, it was through Chabad that, that his life was saved. Really? Yes, and and, and, I, and I'm happy to say how how uh, the the wonderful Chabad Rehab Center here. Uh, I called I called them up. They they do you, do you know of a great place? They said yeah we know of one in Pennsylvania, and we have a great Chabad Shliach there, Rabbi Yosef Lipsker who actually works with this, a non-Jewish place, but he, he does a lot with the Jewish kids who were there, and, and kids in general, but especially the Jewish kids. And uh, he, he could probably get your son in. He did get my son in. 
and the, the, he is now sober for six years, married. Wow. I could cry. I, it, it, he's, he's wonderful. He, he, he just, we just called last week and, and, and from the depths of horror and everything, I was, oh, you know, um, Felicia and I uh, now make Shabbat dinner together every week. It's so special. Uh, uh, there are no words. Um, so this rabbi, Lipsker, I, I, uh, I, I love him deeply, I, and I, I'm in touch with him regularly in, in Reading, Pennsylvania. So I, I have lived through a difficult times. My life has not been a bowl of cherries, but I, have, I am a happy human being. I chose to be happy. Well, that's what I was talking about with free will. Like you, you used what oh, happened that's to right. you. Oh, that's right. That is correct. Um, and chose to be happy through yes, it. Yes, that's right. Is that what led you to write the book on happiness as a serious problem? Um, actually, well, this I, this I did never say. <laughs> It was his mother, the one who's passed away. We were married 17 years, and uh, she had uh, she was molested by a relative when she was a child. I did not know that. And uh, as it happens, the after effects occurred in our marriage, not earlier. Oddly enough, maybe it's normal that that works that way. So she was not a happy person, but she was less happy as time went on. Ironically, as life was good, she got unhappier and unhappier, and it was it was a real deterioration. And uh, I I I titled the book "Happiness Is a Serious Problem" because it was I I I I was confronted with this, but I I I know that it is a. a a task every good person should undertake to be happy. Back to Chabad, uh, your, the, the happiness that Chabad Shluchim radiate is half the reason for their success. Half. And the power of happiness, as I say often, the best advertisement for atheism is an unhappy religious person. Here's my here's my uh, my my call to uh, to religious people, whatever their religion. Either either get happy, or at least act happy, or leave the religion, because <laughs> you're doing a disservice to it. Well, if do it Hashem b'simcha, we're meant to exactly. Hashem with joy. That's right. Also, that's an amazing father. statement. You have to worship God in happiness. That's amazing. How about this? I mean, I, 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 I again, most of my speaking and is to non-Jews, and but I always cite Judaism as the source of my of my views and, and values. And I say, in Judaism, you you you, we say you sit shiva, you sit seven. Seven days you mourn the death of an immediate relative, but not on the Sabbath, I tell them. What a statement. You lose, let's say, the worst of all your child, and you can't mourn on, on Friday night to Saturday night? Isn't that some statement about the power we have over ourselves? That, that's that's a, an amazing lesson of our religion to the world. That's true. There's actually a commandment this month, month of Adar, to be happy. Mar bim besimcha, yeah, exactly, right. yes. Right, so we have to, we don't right. have Right, it's, it's a problem for me because I'm Mar bim besimcha in Tammuz as well. So it's, <laughs> it's a real issue. So we've got to figure out how to do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do. Well, so what, what's <laughs> getting in that. the way? What's what, our... Within Judaism, what brings you the most joy? Oh, Shabbat. Uh, there, there's no close second. It, 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 it's, it's, it's Shabbat, and then there's the rest of Judaism. <laughs> oh, but I'm so cra I'm so crazed about Shabbat, and I have made such a powerful public case for it that uh, I I would say in Jewish life, I, I I'm, I'm I don't expect you to agree, but I believe that if if a Jew said to me, "What will more affect me, 
keeping kosher or keeping Shabbat? There's no question in my mind it's keeping Shabbat. Because time is so infinitely precious. If you have 24 hours of distraction from regular life, that's a hell of a lot more powerful than not having a cheeseburger. That's my view, anyway. And, and what I have always brought non-Jews to my Shabbat table the whole time. So I always tell this story. It's adorable. My older son, when he was it's about... A, it's, a, it's that you see the results. Like, you see the impact. Keeping that mitzvah, you actually see the benefits. Not having your cell phones, being able to be present. Oh, of taxi. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, Right. But but I'm, I'm emphasizing bringing non-Jews to Shabbat table, right. which, by the way, of course you do. Chabad does it all the time. Right. A lot of the people at the table are not Jewish. Uh, and uh, But every Jew should do that. Every Jew who has a Shabbat should have non-Jews at their table. It, it's good for Jews. It's good for non-Jews. It's good for Hashem. It's good for everything. Anyway, one so one day, he's about eight years old, my older son comes over to me and goes, Dad... Are we having any Jews for Shabbos? <laughs> That's, really That's great. so cute. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. Do you have Do you also Do you have friends at your Shabbat table? Family, friends? Oh yeah, no. It's a, it, it, there are about a dozen of us every Friday. We we did not obey the lockdowns. I am proud to say because they were in, entirely harmful. Entirely. Yeah, I've heard your views on, on lockdown. I'm yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you on, on lockdown. Oh, I believe that you are. <laughs> it's the uh, one of my arguments for religion is that religious Christians and Jews, and I know, uh, and I'm in the rare, rare category of knowing them both equally well, uh, are the are almost the only, well, certainly the only communities that that from the beginning thought there's something wrong with this. There is far more rational thought in religious life than in secular life. So only secular people say men have men have babies, men give birth. No religious person says men give birth. The amount of idiocy that secular people believe is is you can choke on. Secular people are my argument for religion. Nice. Yes, I have been more affected to be religious by the secular than by the religious. So you've been more affected by what you've seen you don't like. That's right. That is correct. Than by what you've seen. What, than by well, there is a great liked. line by, it's credited to the British thinker G.K. Chesterton. We don't know if he actually said it, but I didn't say it. And I'm a big believer. Uh, what is it? Kilu? Uh, no, not Kilu. Medigu la la la. If, if you cite a source, you bring redemption to the world. I, I'm very strict on that. This is not my line, but it's brilliant. And it's brilliant. Uh, when people stop believing in God, they don't believe in nothing. They believe in anything. We are living that. Men give birth is anything. Right, right. Someone just told me they were in hospital and they were asked... A oh man yeah, was what their gender and asked, is. No one asked if he, if they're pregnant. Oh yeah, that, of course. <laughs> that, that, that's right. Yeah. Now it's it, there are no longer any women. It's birthing parent. Right. Well, it's, it's not. It's not yeah. even a breastfeeding. Yeah. It's chest feeding. I think we should be proud of who we are. One would think that. Yeah. Well, that's what we want to bring out in today. That we should all be proud of who we are. Can you share with us? You're, you're a very proud Jew, and you've just shared some of that here right now. What would you say to somebody who doesn't take pride in his Judaism? Well... Or in who they are. So, yes, so, or, or in what? Or in who they are. You, yes, I okay, think that relates, well, those are two, yeah. two yeah. different questions. Okay, so uh, again, I, I have to be fully candid with you. By way of answering your question, let me tell you the, my opening line at any Chabad that I speak. Thank you, thank you, Rabbi so and so, for having me. It's an honor. I love Chabad, and I, you know, go into my pro Chabad a few moments. I say, however, however, there is one big difference between your Rabbi and me. Your Rabbi loves all Jews. I don't. <laughs> well, the, the precious part to me is I watch the Rabbi after I say that 
who's trying to stifle his laughter because it's a great lie. <laughs> I don't love all Jews. I, I don't love George Soros. I, I don't love uh, uh, the Jews who are, who are wrecking society with their left-wing nihilism. And I don't mean liberals. Liberals are fine. It's not an issue. I'm talking about the people who teach children uh, uh, that there, are, there is no gender. It's non-binary. It's not men and women. God didn't create men and women. God created human beings. They're doing a lot of damage. Okay, so I, I, Jews have done a lot of damage and a lot of good. So I, I don't think of myself as taking pride. Uh, I, I, what I do, what it is, is Judaism is my value system. Judaism is, is, a, is the biggest source of my sanity. There is a God and this God gave a Torah, and I have a great line about that. Uh, I don't believe in the Torah because I believe in God. I believe in God because I believe in the Torah. The Torah, literally the five books specifically, are my vehicle to God. I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a big tefillah man, I admit it. I don't pray well, but I study really well. Because the Torah has, is the word of God in my opinion. That's why I'm writing my commentary on the Torah. I hope everyone who is watching reads it. Uh, when I, is that I, coming out? I, oh, well, three so volumes are out. Bereshit, yeah, Shemot, and, have... and, 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 and Devarim. Right, and what's coming uh, Genesis, out now? Genesis, Exodus, and right. Deuteronomy. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway finished with Numbers, with Bamidbar, and then the ultimate challenge, Vayikra, Leviticus. They're the best-selling uh, 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 Torah commentary in America. Because the, it explains, people. there are 5,000 reviews on Amazon. People, they don't, even, even Jews who know their Torah, like from Jews, they, they don't know, I know this sounds bizarre, they will know how, how much greater than they even know it now the Torah is. The, it is so relevant to the time in which we live, it is so powerful. You know the Tower of Babel story. Some people think it's a sweet story and so on. It's genius. It's genius. People want it. So why did they build the tower? Because they wanted to make a name for themselves. It's the Torah's statement, Ace, humans, you stupid. You think fame is going to give you anything? I'm famous. So I, I could speak from that. I, I, I'm fine with it. But it doesn't define me. I didn't aim to be famous. I aimed to do good. Uh, there were so many young Americans whose life is devoted to becoming famous. And then what happens then? You know how long fame lasts for most people? A few years. It's like an NFL career. Then it's over. And then what do you do? It, it, it's, it, it, and by the way, it's genius. They all spoke one language, and then God's quote-unquote punishment was that they will all speak different languages. The Torah understands that if everybody is unified in this world, it may not be healthy. Maybe it's a good thing that there are different languages and different nations. That's why I'm very scared about a, a, a one international body controlling the world. I get it from the Torah. It's a very good thing to have different nations. That's why America would, gave yeah. states a lot of power. Because if the federal government has power, it could become a tyranny. Power is a very dangerous thing. Anyway, I'm, I'm in love with the Torah. Don't, don't stop me. <laughs> I am. I'm in love with it. I truly am. So power is It's called the Rational Bible, by the way. I, yeah, I know I, I sound like I I'm it. selling a book. I actually have it. Huh? I have it. Yeah, we I have well, this behind you. If you want to yeah. show it, you, I have the here. Exodus. Yeah, okay. show one? yeah, please. Yeah. I have the Exodus on. I've been reading By the way, it's gorgeously finished. printed. Yeah, it, yeah. They did a great it's job. Beautiful. I like that there are essays throughout. Oh, essays throughout. Yeah. Yes. That's I love right. the essays. They're Thank one. you. Yeah. Good. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. I got a huge essay in, in Bereshit about what, why is God a he? Why isn't God a neuter uh, or, or, or she? Right. Exodus. That one, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, this is a good one. Yes. Well, we thank look you. forward to the new edition. Yes, well, that, so that'll be a year from now, God willing, of Amidbar.
And is Joseph Telushkin editing? Yes, absolutely. That? We've been together since high school. Yeah, and, and that's and, he led us to you. We interviewed Joseph. Oh, that's right. Yes. And well, he, we're very close. It's yes. a very beautiful. You know, they used to say so often, Joseph and Dennis, they're close like brothers. And I always thought, how many brothers are this close? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of line is that? <laughs> That's great. But yes, and Joseph speaks very fondly of you. Like you can tell you, you have a very deep yes, and special relationship. That is absolutely right. Well, it, the, the, a big blessing in my life has been friends. I'm a big, big friends fan. I, I am very lucky in the people I have in my life. That ha is the best part of my being well known. That therefore, I, so many people who know me, so good people contact me. And then I bring them into my life. And, and of every background, and, and uh, both men and women, uh, when I was in uh, Denmark, as I told you to give a speech uh, a few months ago, so a young woman, 30-year-old woman, came to interview me from a Danish magazine. Within 30 minutes, I said, you know what? Come to our house. My wife was with me. And, and stay with us when you come to America. 30 minutes after meeting her. One of God's biggest gifts to me is I have tremendous ability to identify wonderful people. And I've never been disappointed. Never. That's a great record. So you have good intuition. In, in that regard, yes, absolutely. So what advice would you give to someone who wants to build lasting friendships? So, the, it, 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 first of all, I have said on my happiness hour for 25 years, you should date for friends the way you dated for a spouse. In other words, pursue friendship just like you pursued marriage. Take it just as seriously. And that even if you're the most happily married person in the world, you need friends. The woman needs women friends, the man needs man friends, and the couple needs couples friends. It, it is not good to go through life without that. And my definition of a friend is someone who, to whom you can say anything. Because if you're afraid to say something, it means you don't trust them. That's true for your spouse too. If you're hiding things, it means you don't trust them. They find out, they'll hurt me. That's a really good definition. Oh, it is, it, yes. Uh, uh, it, it's a, thank you, and it is, I'm glad you picked up on it. It's, that's exactly what it is. So I have that, and, and people should, should all yearn for that. How do you get it? You, first of all, you have to, you have to seek it. And, and next, you have, to, uh, you have to be open with your values. You can't hide who you are. In America today, conservatives, for example, they're afraid to, to, to say that they're conservative. Religious people are often afraid to say they're religious. And that's a tragedy. That's a first in American history. Yeah, that's why I was asking you about your pride, because a lot, many people don't take pride in who they are. Right, but yes, I, I my only issue with pride is, is the word, maybe. Is that <laughs> it's so? It, I'm sorry. The word. Well, yeah, that's very, yeah, exactly. Other than that, I have no pride. Right. No, it, it, is that again? As I, I said, my, I. My, I don't, th for example, they, they speak today about LGBTQ Pride Day. And I, and I, I always say, what are you proud of? Uh, uh, of course you, you deserve every human right every other human has, but you're proud, you're a bisexual? Why are you proud of it? Okay, that you live with it, that you are it, but I don't know why it's a source of pride. And my, and my friends who were gay don't understand it either. They're not proud they're gay. They are what they are. One of one of my closest friends uh, is indeed he's a gay gay man. He's married to a gay man, uh, and uh, he said, "Dennis, I just want you to know, I I totally agree with you. The ideal is a man woman, and if I if I had any attraction to a woman, I'd have married a woman. But I have none, and I believe him. I don't think he made that. You don't make that up. A man can't make up who he's attracted to. Women can. Women women's sexuality is much more." amorphous uh, than, than men's. But anyway, it, it's, uh, you know, I, I testified in Congress against same-sex marriage. And a lot of people hate me for it. But I, I stand by it. 
And when I come out with Vayikra, uh, with Leviticus, the posuk that condemns a male, uh, male homosexual relations, I have, I've already written a 22,000 word essay. Half of my Vayikra will be on one verse because I will explain why the Torah is against it. And it, it, it's, it's, I've thought this through for decades. Obviously, a gay person is created in God's image every bit as much as a heterosexual. I mean, those are all obvious. My wife and I are godparents to a gay couple's kids. It means if they die, we are their moral instructors. And they know that, I, that I've been against same-sex marriage. So how did, you, how did that relationship stay intact? Because, because they know that I love them. Uh, listen, I'm against single parenthood. No, but that's very unique to be able to have it, that opinion. Oh, that, yes, it is. I and agree then with they you. still want you to be there. That is correct. It is a credit to them and it is a credit to me. So here is my... my, my uh, I, I so often in my brain, but not on the radio, lapse into some, you know, yeshiva-ish kind of thing. <laughs> this is my shita. This, <laughs> this is my approach. Okay. I am uh, compassionate in the micro and for standards in the macro. I don't give up my standards for the individual and I don't let my standards stop me from loving the individual. That's very, that's, that's how we should, all should be. That's, yes, God bless you. That's, that's exactly how we should all be. That's exactly right. And how do you attain that? You just do it. You, you attain anything, it's like people say, I speak so often about courage. They go, how do, you, how, do you, how do you gain courage? I say, all you do is wake up one day and say, I want to be courageous. Then you'll be, cour- then you'll be courageous. Even Judaism if is the source of my whole attitude toward life. I'm a behaviorist. Act X, you'll feel X. This story I'm about to tell you is maybe my favorite, and I have great stories. And it was, I, it changed my life in fourth grade in yeshiva, and I tell it to non-Jews all the time. Obviously, I don't use the Hebrew that he used, or the, or the, the Yiddish. So fourth grade, the Rebbe goes, okay, boys, it's time to daven mincha. And I always translate, time for the afternoon prayer. And I, with the nature that I was given, I walked over to the rabbi completely respectfully and I said, "Uh, Rebbe, I want to tell you, I'm not in the mood to daven mincha. I'm not in the mood for the afternoon prayer. The, The man understood English. He was from Eastern Europe, but he understood English. He striked, stroked, strike, strokes his beard looks up like this, you know, the yeshiva wish way of a Rebbe. <laughs> Dennis Prager is not in the mood to daven mincha. <laughs> so what? The man changed my life. He said to me, your moods should not control your behavior. So what? And that has been a, a view if that man knew what, how many people, he has affected millions of people because he said, so what to be in fourth grade. That's what, so what? By the way, I have it on the internet because I write a column every week. I have literally 1,000 columns on the internet. And uh, one of them from at least 10 years ago is if a wife is not in the mood. And I, I, it was totally taken from the Rebbe in fourth grade. You're not in the mood? So what? <laughs> now, you know, people attacked me and all this, and, and I, I don't care. I, it's really attacks That's, on It's a Chabad need. philosophy, too. Oh, uh, no kidding. <laughs> to no, just, yes. To just do. That's right. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, yes. Obviously, there are le- exceptions. You're sick. You're, you're, you're in a bad mood. I mean, I, we understand that. But in general, it, it's more, what mind, is more mind over matter. Yes, it's mind over matter. Yes, it's. Uh, it, I love that you said. By the way, it's also from Christians' attitude. The it's, from Christian and the from Jew have so much in common. And and it's important because 
you're the salvation of this country, if there will be one, the frum of the two religions. My, my annoyance is that the rest of orthodoxy, or orthodoxy in general, does not speak out enough. It, That's it's, true. The, the world is not hearing the religious Jewish voice. The Aguda does, does some work in this regard. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and, and they will, but the, the, the society is being crushed by radical secularism and, and the, the, the from community just, you know, goes on with its, its own internal issues. And then when, when the world starts hurting Jews, they go, gee, how did this happen? This is my argument to Jews. If we don't influence the world from Sinai, from Sinai, then don't yell when the world gets bad. God gave us a, a, an antidote to evil, the Torah. If you don't bring that antidote to the world, don't expect not to be infected by the poison. One of the things the Lubavitcher Rebbe was against was young, um, impressionable men, women um, going to college. And that's one area where there's been a lot of you know, controversy, controversy. People saying, well, how, is it, how could you not go to college? How could you not get educated? Yet this really stuck in the Chabad community, and, and most people, um, well, now more people are going, but there's still this view that college it might not be the right thing. And I wanted to uh, you know, know more about what your take is on that. How do you feel he about that? He was college? a nubby. <laughs> <laughs> the man was a prophet. I heard it when I taught at Brooklyn College, when I was still living in New York. I was a teacher at Brooklyn College. And I was told, I, it was the first time I ever heard of Lubavitch or Chabad, the, uh, these kids won't go to college. And, and I, I've, all, I've never immediately dismissed something. I always mull it over. I don't always assume that whatever I don't uh, immediately agree with is wrong. And I remember thinking, that's interesting. Not that it's stupid. That's interesting. And I was agnostic. I didn't know if it was a good idea or a bad idea. I just found it fascinating. Uh, I, I went to graduate school. I went to a, 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 um, you know, what you, an Ivy League graduate school. Uh, for decades, I have been telling parents that sending your kid to college is playing Russian roulette with their values. But the only, you know what Russian roulette is? Where you, people take a gun and one of the six chambers has a bullet. So they shoot themselves in the head. It's what's called Russian roulette. I don't know if it actually exists, but, but that's what it is. The difference with college is five of the six chambers have bullets. Only one chamber doesn't. The chances of college ruining your child, well now the chances of high school and elementary school ruining your child, are, are very high. Did you go to college? I, yeah, so, yes. Yeah, I, I went to uh, yeah. graduate school. And I went so, to graduate and, but school. it did do you some good. Yeah, because my values, I'm very strong. He was the exception. I, yeah, it, you're yeah, so, uh, it, so you're that made, one. Oh, I, I, was, yeah. I, I stuck out at Columbia like, like a, a grapefruit in, in a tobacco uh, right. field. Uh, so it, if it, someone it, does go to college, what what would it entail for them to be that one in a million? Well, or... yes, okay. So then if your background prepared you, and not all do. Yeah. Sometimes if, you even have the background and it still somehow right, ruins you. That's right, because they didn't get enough hashkafa. Right. Yeah, it's true. They got, and this is, sounds heretical, but it's not, or I don't, th I don't mean it to be, they got too much halacha and too little hashkafa. By the way, Ida, Ida's been to college. She's well, a I went, mental health counselor. But I went years after I got married. I didn't go when I was... Yeah, well, you know, well, well that, yeah. by the way, that's a big help. Yeah, because she was already People grounded. People who go years after they're married or they already have a child, they, they know reality and, and, and they're not going to be as poisoned. Right. Uh, that, that is a factor. Yeah, because there were times that the Lubavitch Rebbe did tell people that they could go to Correct. college. Correct. I know that. I'm yeah. well aware. I remember what somebody told me about... Uh, what was it? Oh, my God. I wish I knew the punchline, but something to the effect that was a guy was a Baal Tshuva and he was a member of a symphony orchestra. And he just said, you keep playing, man. You, you just keep playing. You don't, you don't leave that world. No, no, he, 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 well, he, he was a special human being. There's, you don't have to be religious. You don't have to be Jewish to understand this was a special man. End of issue. 
the special Rebbe you're talking people. about. Yeah, the yes. Lubavitcher Rebbe. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, and a holy man. Yes, yes. Well, special and holy are pretty, uh, pretty synonymous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's actually nice to hear that from you because you are somebody that went to college and I'm sure you learned a lot in college, but yet... It's not something well, that you I really value. Russian. You learned Russian. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying I it doesn't sound too. like from what you're saying that it really is going to necessarily get you places in life. Oh, it may get you to very bad places. It, it, pe people don't know what is going on in college, but again, in high schools and elementary schools. I mean, they're teaching kids who are five years old that you may not be a boy or a girl. You'll choose. It limits your thinking in some ways. Well, it distorts it. Uh, it limits is, is, is an understatement. It distorts it. I don't want my child to be in a classroom where, where they go, okay, tomorrow we have drag queen story hour. You know what that is? This is, you should know, this is where you have to know what's going on in society. It's really bad. They take kids in, in, at five years of age to a library, for example, and they watch a man dressed as a woman perform for them. That's what a drag queen is, a man dressed as a woman. No, I haven't heard of that. I mean, if, well, that, that's what this, yeah, this is. But I, I can imagine that that's something that goes on. People need to know that the from have to speak out and be aware. It, it's, it's, you create a healthy life, but it's good. I was thinking more hurt. in terms, yeah, but that, that's a really good point. I was thinking more in terms of sometimes you see people who go to college end up being very straight thinking more than broad minded more than broad thinking you know what i mean they're just very oh, narrow-minded that's I would say. why they're okay with suppressing other speech because yeah. the, the of the narrow-mindedness and you see a lot of successful people who have not gone to college that is correct it look if you study stem science technology engineering math you have to go to college there's no you're right going to study physics on your own i understand that but for, for almost everything else. What did you study when you went to college? Yeah, I, I studied, uh, well, I majored, my degree was in history and Middle East studies. But so, that did help you with your books. <laughs> he could well, have done it either way, we know that. Uh, my, my values were so intact that, right. that it, was, it was a non-issue. Yeah. And, and, and it wasn't quite as bad then, it was bad. I wrote a paper, so I was at the Russian Institute at Columbia University. I, I specialized, communism was my field in graduate school. You, you couldn't specialize in that in, in undergraduate. And uh, one of my teachers was a Marxist and a Jew, needless to say. Interesting. No, not needless to say. There were some Marxists who were not yeah. Jewish. But, but if you were at a university, and there's a good chance you're a Jewish Marxist. Anyway, so I wrote a paper for him, a comparison of Judaism and Marxism. No, no doubt he had never in his life received such a paper. To his credit, I thought I'd get a D because he would, you know, because I came out in favor of Judaism, but I really had studied a lot of Marxism. And uh, he gave me a B plus, which I was very pleased with. I didn't give really a hoot what, what grades I got. Uh, I wasn't going to go further than in any in academia. Uh, but uh, I, that's what I wrote on. And by the way, that was transformed a few years later into the first book I wrote with Joseph Telushkin, The Nine Questions People Ask About Judaism, which in two years will have its 50th anniversary. Nice. Congratulations. 50 and it's still in print and widely read as an introduction to Judaism. And there's a question, one of the nine questions is, how does Judaism differ from Christianity? How does Judaism differ from Marxism? And I don't know what the third one was. Maybe those are the two. And that's where I put the fruit of my Columbia Marxist paper. What, what um, drew you to specifically learning Russian and being As I said, it was the Cold War. I wanted to understand the enemy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, uh, that's why I read newspapers I differ with to, the, to this day. I'm fascinated by people that I believe deeply are doing bad things, how they think. It fascinates me. 
although my biggest study has been of goodness because goodness is rarer than, than badness in my So opinion. you think there's more evil than good? I do, yes. And, and what, what made you come to that conclusion just by the people you've interacted with? No, not at all. I, I almost only interact with good people. Uh, I'm very lucky. Because that's who you attract? Yes, that's right. And I, and I want them in my life. And I, yes, that's correct. So what, Look, what, what brings what, you to wait, that what, conclusion? What, what brought God to, to destroy the world with the mabul, with the flood? Uh, he looked and he said, wow, this, the, the, it's, uh, uh, the world was filled with Hamas. It's filled with violence. But what, that what? same person had the, po had the potential to be good. All yeah, that's correct. People. No, we all have that potential. But it's a hell of a lot easier to be bad. Yeah. It's, it's a hell of a lot easier to lie than to tell the truth all the time. It's a hell of a lot easier to, uh, to be selfish than selfless. Right. But in essence, it may not be evil. It may be good. It's just that we're the, it's easier to be evil. R right. But since evil is what you do, this is an interesting area. I don't know if Chabad and I agree on this. Because uh, this is a major, major uh, crusade I have been on. Yitzir Lev Hadam Rami Nurav, where God says in Genesis, the, the will of man's heart is towards evil from his youth. So my Chabad friends tell me that they believe that we're basically good. And I says, well, how do you reconcile that with what God says about man? I don't remember the answer because I'm not sure it's persuasive. I think Chabad believes that. They half believe it. I'll that, tell you why they half believe it is because we have an animal soul and a godly well, soul. Well, that's exactly right. By yeah. the way, that's a, I, this is so precious that you said that. That's my deepest belief, and it's, I can't prove it. And I heard it from an Orthodox rabbi once. Who is God speaking to when he says, let us make man in our image? Who's he talking to? So some say it's it's... The traditional Jewish response has been, it's the royal we. God is just not speaking, I'm going to make man. It's a humility. Nice. I have no issue with that. Another one is he's talking to the angels. Okay. Uh, I don't buy that one particularly. Uh, the best answer I heard is he was talking to the animals. They were already in existence. And this was told by an Orthodox rabbi. But it's in, totally in line with what you just said. We have an animal nature and a divine nature. So God is saying, we're going to make man, you animals and me, Hashem, God, and you the animals, we're going to make this creature man who will be half animal and half divine. Our choice in life is do we act like an animal or do we act divine? Exactly, yes. Yeah. But that's that's interesting. <laughs> that um, that's who that's what this rabbi told you who is talking to you. Yes, yeah. and, and in light of that, it's your belief that we're we're both. Yeah. Well, where does it come from? The job is for us to reveal the godly part of us. That is yes, uh, right to ourselves and yeah, to others. And to others, yeah. Yes. Well, that's uh, I I speak in my shul every week, and I have for the many decades. So this past weekend, uh, this past Shabbat, I, I talked about something I'm preoccupied with just of late. Who, what is a great person? I listened to that podcast that you oh, gave. Oh, you did? Yes. Yeah, but our we, listeners did. Yeah, that so our we listeners, went... and I want, we wanted to, we actually brought this up. Oh, Go ahead. What, oh, what, we wanted to know what, how you define greatness. Right. So I have four characteristics, and that is courage, preoccupation with the truth. Um, God, I can't believe it. it's just so new that I, 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 I'm not, I have to put it into my memory bank. Um, don't care what others think about them. Uh, don't, in other words, don't yearn to be loved. And, oh God, oh, uh, and prepare to be an outlier. Different march to a different drummer. Those are the four characteristics. And I said the Torah wants every one of us to be great. What is Mamlechet Kohanim? What, a Goy Kadosh, to be a, a kingdom of priests and a holy, a holy nation. 
And then I, I pointed out to Chelet, the, the blue in the tzitzit, in the, in the, in the strings of, the, of, of what we're, men are supposed to wear, is royal blue. In other words, you're supposed to be great like a king. The Torah wants us to be great. Do you know, do you have anyone in mind? Do you know anyone great? I do, actually. By the way, here's an interesting thing. Every, I asked the shul, 150 people come each week. So I asked them, I didn't ask them to raise their hand, but I just said, I'm going to take a moment of silence. I want you to think, do you know any great people? My suspicion is almost everyone knows a great person, at least one. And that's inspiring. Very. Not only that, though, this is really important. People confuse fame with greatness. Most famous people are not great, and most great people are not famous. That is incredibly important for people to understand. If you touch one life and you embody those four things I just said, courage, uh, don't yearn, I'll talk about the don't yearn to be loved in a moment. Courage, don't yearn to be loved, commitment to truth, and um, an outlier. Are they in any hierarchical order? No, no, they're not. I guess guess none of it is possible without courage. But I I would say if you pursue truth, that makes you courageous. So you you could interchange them. Truth is the most important thing there is. All evil comes from lies. The Nazis did their evil because they lied about Jews. And there are m- massive lies being told today, which are, which are very, very uh, scary. L- like, you know, sex is not binary. There are, there are more than two sexes. I mean, that, that is a horrible lie. Uh, don't yearn to be loved is a very important one. If you want to be good at anything, a good teacher, a good politician, a good parent, mm-hmm. if you want to be loved by your children at all times, you will be a lousy parent. So how would you say, instead of looking at it that way, how would you say to gain the love from your children or gain the love from the people? To, well, to you, speak truth or be yourself? That's right. You, you, and let the chips fall where they may. That is exactly correct. Uh, that that the crisis in America today is largely parents were preoccupied with being loved, not being respected. For a little example, they bend down to talk to their kid. The kid should look up to you. That's a physical act. You're not their equal. And get that through your mind. You are not your children's peer. They have peers. They're called friends. So therefore, I have a, another shita. I'm filled with these. <laughs> and, and that is, you should, be, you should yearn and work to be loved by only two people, friends and your spouse. You should work to be loved by your spouse and your friends, but not by your children, not by your students, not by the people who vote for you. And how did you come to that conclusion? I don't know the answer. <laughs> I just I came to that conclusion. Yeah, but it, it makes sense. Yes, it does. That's why I call my Torah commentary the rational Bible. It, if it doesn't make sense, you reject what I say. It has to make sense. So those four things in a spousal relationship, um, like w- wanting to be liked. That's good that's in a, a spousal relationship. Right, right. Oh, that's right, huge. Right. Because right. then you don't take your spouse for granted. Right. But, but it's not true for your, your relationship to your children. Any, they don't need a pal. They need a parent. You're the only one they get, or one of two that they get. You better, you, you better honor that role. By the yeah, way, it says great. love your neighbor. It says love uh, God. It says love the stranger. It doesn't say love your parent. It says honor your parent. And not yeah. only that, and it's the only creature on earth you're told to honor, that there's a commandment to honor. And not only that, but you're also told Ish imova aviv tiro, that a person is to fear his mother and father. By the way, almost all the modern English translations, including Jewish ones, say revere. They're afraid of the Torah text. The thought of kid fearing the parent bugs them. So here I used I used my uh, my 
my human laboratory, my talk show. I had, a sh I had an hour once. Call me up and tell me, if you didn't use drugs in high school and college, why didn't you? I was curious. I had wow. no idea what they'd say. Almost right. every caller said, because my mother would kill me. If they didn't fear their mother, they'd have used drugs. Wow. Fear of parent is a very, very important thing. You know why it, that might be so? Because actually the reason, I've heard this um, from a rabbi too, the reason why honor your mother and father is in the same, with the lachot, it's in the yes. same row as, as all the, God, all, right? all of, of all the God commandments from God, right? um, is because we are partners as parents with God. That's right. I, I, and we have I agree to fear with that. God. And I, so. have another, I have another view as well. Where there, if, if your parent is not above you, God will not be above you. Of the authority of the parent is the vehicle to the authority of God. Wow. So big I am on that, and I'll tell you another thing. Every cult, uh, and, and the Nazis and the communists and cults, the first thing they do is kill parental authority. That's what's happening in schools. You have no right to know whether your kid says he's a, he's a girl. Uh, again, these are things you got to follow because what's happening in schools is a monstrosity. Yeah, They're, they they have contempt for parental authority in schools today. It's it's not a, it's hap it, it's happening in the religious world as well. I mean, the philosophy of parenting has changed. Is that right? Yeah, there's philosophy. I mean, I think that it's more about actually similar to how you grew up though. Let let the child be. Now it's more about let the child be instead of Well, yeah, but you, you giving I, instructions. I grew up in a very strong value oriented place. Right. They, and and they didn't let me be till I was fourteen. Right. But and also when parents say, Oh, so I should let my child do what he wants, I said, Well it depends what the, the what those wants are. If he if he wants if he's not gonna do schoolwork and is just gonna go to parties or play video games, forget it. I was learning Russian and how to conduct orchestras. Right, so I guess, there's a big difference. Yeah, that is a big difference. Yes. but that's not necessarily what kids are doing uh, today. They, that's correct. Yeah, and that's more of the philosophy: is let kids be. Well, you have a built-in. The, uh, there's the from world has a built-in advantage of the kids don't use their cell phone one day a week. Yes, that is a big advantage. Huge beyond words. I see it with my grandchildren because my oldest son is Orthodox. And it is, it is a total joy to see that. What they do is they actually play with friends. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, the old-fashioned, just be with human beings. And the boundaries, have, boundaries also help. Boundaries don't, they're everything. Kids need boundaries more than they need love. This is another Narishkeit uh, nonsense about the modern age. All kids need is love. They need a lot more than love. They need boundaries, that, that's number one. Or as John Rosemond, a child psychologist put it, kids need vitamin N more than any other vitamin. Vitamin N is no. If you aren't right. saying no so to your kid, that is not necessarily not the philosophy today, I'm saying. I know, yeah. well, you're telling me that it's, if it's not even in the from world, then it shows how powerful societal influence is even in, in somewhat sealed off communities. Yeah, it's definitely trickled. Into That's why I said <laughs> Hashkaf is so important. You have to learn the values issue. It's not, it, your, your kid could know the shas by heart, but if they don't get the, the, the values to confront the challenges of the society, that, then all the blot Gemara won't help. How do you teach, can you teach someone to have courage? Someone who's maybe shy or timid or doesn't well, really Well, as I know. said, the only way to get courage is to decide you want it. it. The only way to learn Portuguese is to, is to learn Portuguese. Right. Basically, anything you want, you can have if you do it. I don't, I don't mean gold, golden, you know, faucets, but it within you, you can do it. You want, you, you, you want to play the piano, play the piano. Uh, but it takes effort. With courage, 
I would ask, what are you afraid of? That's what I would be. What are you afraid of? Let's say, let's say someone's afraid of flying. The answer to a fear of flying is to fly. Right. It's the only way to overcome the fear. And how do you do that? Take a sedative. Take two friends to hold on to their hands. Do whatever you need to do, but get on a damn airplane. That is the only way to stop being afraid. Right. People are afraid of being attacked. If they take a position, uh, they'll be attacked on Facebook or whatever. Uh, fine. It will hurt you in the beginning, and then, it, it, like the airplane, it won't matter. Right. So, I think rejection is what people are probably afraid of. Well, right. But, but uh, I'd rather be accepted by God and rejected by man. That's a good one. So can you share with us, uh, um, while we're discussing now courage and courage and God, someone that you consider great? Because I wanted to go back to that. I just wanted to hear somebody that well, comes to mind for you. Well, uh, I, I, I must say, I feel that I have a, a, a number of great people in my life. Uh, my wife would be embarrassed if I said, uh, if she heard me say this. So. I, I'm warning her in advance to you know, go to the bathroom at this point. But she is a great person. She she That's has so she has exactly what I just described. That's how you came to the conclusion. Because well, have it's that. It, it's part. That's right. Yes, I believe that the the, the guy who's PragerU, Pr the gigantic website that I run that has billions of a billion views a year, PragerU or Prager University. Alan Estrin came up with that idea. I think he's a great man. Oh, I, I, I truly, uh, I, I don't lack for great people in my life. And, That's great. Huh? That's great. It is great. That is exactly <laughs> correct. But it's very important that people not confuse great with famous. Right. But the, the, it does exist to, I, I mean, I would like to think that you can find someone that's famous and great. That has both elements. Yes, no, no. It, it doesn't disqualify you. Just it's it's not indispensable to greatness. Right. It doesn't make the famous part does not make. No, you that's great. correct. Yes. But you can but, have both. Right. That's exactly right. I, I would like to be a great man, and I, I don't mean famous. I, I have fame, and the the beauty of it is only one thing. This is what I care about in in fame. Oh, good. That means you've read another one of my books or heard one of my lectures. Because I really, I wrote in my diary in junior and high school, I want to influence people to the good. I knew what I wanted to do with my life when I was 16 years old, and I have not wavered one iota. You, wow. Yes. Did you ever question? Never. Never questioned. I was very lucky. My, my older son said to me when he was 20, Dad, you don't realize how lucky you were. You knew exactly who you are and what you wanted to do as a kid. Most kids don't know that. And, and that's the beauty of having kids. You, you learn about human beings. So, so you always knew you wanted to have a radio show? No, I, I had no idea. I, I, I had no idea how I would influence people. Oh, but you knew you wanted to influence. That's all I wanted but to do. But don't you think it does take, if you're, it's very nice if someone is great and they're famous, because if they're famous, they can have influence. Well, that, yes. Well, more influence. More influence. Yes. But, but by definition, a limited number of people can have massive influence. Right. How right. many people can be famous? It's, it's a limited number by, by definition. Right. So does that mean that doing good in this world is, right. is limited no, one, to to yeah. oh one percent of humanity? Right. You can just affect more people, I guess. But yeah, that's all. It's a number. That's yeah. correct. But you can. Yes, one that's person right. at a time. I, listen, the greatest single achievement is raising good children. There is no achievement that comes close to that. That's the toughest. Yeah. And like your dad said. It was good muzzle. Well, half, yes. Yeah. Yeah, he said good muzzle, but I would say 50-50. Yeah, that, good. I'm glad you confirmed that. <laughs> yes. No, no, look. Uh, by the way, do you know, ironically, I mean, they, my parents were not particularly loving. I don't say this as a criticism. It was that, that generation was not huggy, huggy, huggy. Right. And uh, Are you huggy, huggy? Oh, very much. I, I hug strangers. Oh, I, I, I hug. I, at the, the, the drop of a hat, I hug people. I, I, I love hugging. I hug, so that's interesting I, that you became huggy. Oh, and isn't that interesting? Yes. Big, big time huggy. More, more so than my brother. 
uh, interestingly, growing up in the same home. But it, we're born with personalities. Right. I, I, I have a great saying. I have contempt for humanity, but I love people. <laughs> and that, that's the truth. Right. That is exactly how I feel. So I said, I think there's more evil, but, the, but uh, there are a lot of great people, or, and even good people. But yeah, so I hug my boys a lot. Yes, that is true. But but uh, I, I, I my so my parents, uh, they, they they you know why my parents did not spend much time with with my brother or me, they were so in love with each other. Uh-huh. isn't that interesting? They were the focus of each other's attention. Wow! So you saw they that. were married seventy two years. Wow! When my mother died at eighty nine. My father was 90. It it's essent, essentially ended his life. And he was a very happy guy till then. And after that, it wasn't the same for him. Uh, my, I, I never saw my father cry once in my life. And after my mother died, he cried every time I, I talked to him. So it sounds like you you lived with a very special relationship watching your parents. Well, I did. I did. They, they, they were crazy about each other. That is exactly right. How did it manifest? Like, what types of things did you see? Well, they, they went out a lot. Uh, my, my father would be physically demonstrative, which was very uncommon in the Frum world, to my mother in front of us. Uh, he, he would, he, you know, he, my father was a character. Uh, I'm a character. My father was a character. <laughs> my son is a character. And my grandson is a gra- character. It's really funny. What, what it, do you mean by character? I'm just curious. Yes, you, mean a, you know eccentric? what? It's sort of, you want, you can't define it, but when you meet one, you know who it is. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, here's an interesting, I, you know, I have, I, I explore every aspect of life. I mean, here's another theory number 85236. <laughs> I used to think there were more male characters than female characters. I don't think that anymore. I have been meeting a lot of women who are characters. It's, is, and it, do you, do you think that's a good thing? I do, yeah. Characters are a good thing. Char- well, they they are. They 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 liven up the room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's that's one of their their aspects. That and if you're not look, if you're not a character, you can't become one. And if you are one, you can't stop being one. It just it just is. It's it's your nature. It's like punning. I was right before you came. There was a man visiting, and he was cracking puns. And I said, you know, I have a theory about punsters. They can't help themselves. I've, I haven't cracked a pun in my life. No? I don't know how. But people who pun naturally, they can't stop. <laughs> they think in puns. Yes. They Pun-ity. think in puns. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's funny. Um, it's, I, I, you said I can ask you anything, so I just want to ask you. Absolutely. Because you saw this very special and a loving relationship with your parents, and yeah. then you went through your own journey where right. you were divorced right. and remarried. So what was that like for you? What, like, were you shocked that this... Shocked. I was totally shocked. Uh, and um, when I was divorced, and I, 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 I say everything, I was divorced twice, actually. The, the, the woman who died, died after our divorce. By the way, for the record, I was a very good husband. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. And I'm not saying they were bad wives at all. Good people can not necessarily get along. I mean, they, but in the, in, in the case of my, the wife of 17 years, that was, that was painful to watch her, her descent into depression and sadness and, and all the things that go with that. And it, it is what it is. And I realized it, it is what it is. Anyway, when I divorced in, in the first case, uh, I was heartbroken. I thought I'm ruining my, my child's life. I have a child from each marriage. And it's, there's a certain irony here because he divorced the, my Orthodox son, the older one, when his child was about the age of, well, that he was when I divorced his mom. And he's doing fine, my grandson and my son is doing fine, do I wish that I, that it was a good marriage and it would have stayed intact? You can wish all you like, it wasn't. Listen to this, this will blow your mind. Sitting in that seat, I'd say 10 years ago. So he was, he would have been 
29 or 30. And, and uh, uh, I'm so open. I asked him on the air, and I did not know what he would say. This was a gamble. I said, David, how do you regard the divorce of your mother and me? For all I know, he could have said, look, the truth is, it, it was traumatic. I mean, I, I've worked it through, but Dad, to be honest, it, it, was, it was a difficult thing. But you know what his answer was? That my view is God brought you and Mom together to make me. How's that? Well, Sounds like he's your son. It does. <laughs> I, I agree. That's a very, that's a very astute observation. I felt that inside of me. That's the that's the answer I I, I was hoping for as, as it happens, and 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 I, and I don't think it's wrong. He he cracks up because by the way his mother and I get along great. It's not even an issue, and which is wonderful for him. By the way, I always tell divorced people it's not the divorce that hurts kids; it's what happens after the divorce. Right. That's the damage. If the parents hate each other, if they're fighting constantly, if that, that, or bad, God forbid, bad-mouthing the other. Well, Mrs. Telushkin, Devorah Telushkin, actually told me something very special about you. She said there was some gathering, and your ex-wives were there, um, and your wife, and you said something beautiful about each person made everybody oh, feel good. Oh, thank you for reminding me. I, I re now I remember that. I did do that. Yeah, and, and so... And I meant it. Yeah, I thought that was very unique. Yes. Well, you work, you work at what's good in life, and then, and then, then you can achieve it. But I think it takes two people to, to come to a Well, or, come to or a at place least of... one, and then the other catches up, right. hopefully. But I, I hear horror stories about divorced people who, you know, especially where there's bad-mouthing of the other. Or, or just... Do you think you, you're a different person now to who you were then? Like, do you think that... I don't, to... I don't think so. I can only say that... Uh, I've, I've had my share of pain. It's a good thing I've had it. I don't think I would be uh, as, as developed as I am if I had a painless life. I don't think a painless life is a good life. In fact, I, here's a real wild one. I have posed the question on the radio, is a, is a happy childhood a blessing? It sounds ridiculous. It doesn't sound ridiculous. Everybody thinks so. Oh, that's the best. I'm not sure. Do you know the finest people I know had real challenges as children? I'll give you an example because she's very open. So I do a podcast with a 23-year-old girl slash woman. I, I, I thank God for her existence, Julie Hartman. And everybody listening should watch or listen to Dennis and Julie. We've listened and yeah, we, she's we great. love it. Oh, it's it's special. It's it special is. also because of your age difference. That's right. Yes, but it doesn't mean anything. Right. Yeah. That's what's so amazing. Right. And that you're able to hear each other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't matter to her, and it doesn't matter to me. It's we. It's weird almost. Yeah. So uh, she is truly, truly a special human being, and one of the reasons for her empathy and goodness is that she has a severely autistic sister. This has played a deep role in her life of, of not having it easy and knowing that people suffer. So uh, a bad childhood is no blessing, but, a, but an, a painless childhood is no blessing either. Right. Parents are too busy trying to make a painless childhood for their kid. It's like antibodies. If you never get sick, you, you have no antibodies. Is this Chabad's See, philosophy, by the way? Because you often, Chabad, like Tanya actually, will say that you need to go to, through a painful experience in order to get to a place of growth and joy. I'm telling you, as, as one Chabad rabbi, <laughs> may he rest in peace, Schwartz, he, he was known as. Yes, he's got a, he's got a book called. Um, I, I told you that's why. Oh, really? No. Oh, I love um, that guy. San Francisco, right? Yeah. yeah. He was my first uh, Chabad, Chabadnik I love rabbi. how that happens, it's called. Oh, really? Yeah. So, uh, what was I going to tell you? We're both friends Schwartz. with his daughters. I'm sorry? We're both friends with his daughters. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Did so you me. know him? 
I didn't. My husband did. I didn't uh-huh, personally yeah, know him. Yeah, I, I knew him for many years. Oh, and I forgot the story. I wanted to oh tell. no, we want to hear the story. I know. Schwartzy. I'm sure you do. I'll call you up when okay. you're back in New York. No, why? Yeah. Why did we come to this? Why were we discussing that? Oh, about because um, I was saying. Oh yes, friend. I now remember. He said to me <laughs> when you said that's Chabad philosophy. Yeah. I was thinking half of what I say turns out to be Chabad, not half, <laughs> nine tenths. And he he once looked at me and he said, Dennis, you are uh, a you're you you're a, a chabadnik in the closet he said and i am a hippie in the closet <laughs> it was a very it's That's true. true he had a true hippie personality and i i don't but it, but he did and and uh but it is true i i, I am a chazid in, a chazid in the closet that that i i realize it because of my my affection for chabad and, and it it's the ease that I feel uh, with uh, with you, and and I feel it's reciprocated. You know, I've been the MC of the Chabad Telethon for twenty five years. I mean, you know. Yeah, we um, we were discussing you last night because we actually interviewed Rabbi Kuhnan's daughter. She gives a Tanya class. Oh, I know. Uh, that's right. I you know. Her oh, too. yes, that's yes, right. Correct. She told us yes. yes. So we interviewed her last night because she gives amazing Tanya yes. classes. And so we yeah. wanted to you, have a deeper you, understanding your, of it. Your task is to, to even get out to the world more. You, you really have a healthy outlook. And, and, and it, it has to be shared because it's, if we don't share it, that, that's, that's my whole life is, hey folks, this is the best book ever written, the Torah. And it's got universal lessons. So I don't think, I, I know that God gave the Torah to the Jews, it's obvious, but I, I, I believe it's our task to then give it to the world. It shouldn't stop with us. We're, we're, one, we're a tiny percentage of the world's population. You follow these laws because that's your, your chachma, like that's what Chabad is. Chachma obina le'nehamim. It, it is your wisdom and understanding in the eyes of the nations. God cares about what the nations think. What, what's the most challenging part of doing what you do for you? Oh, the, this, I'll tell you honestly, the, the single most uh, challenging is the uh, American Jews have, have so imbibed uh, the, the values uh, that are antithetical to, to Judaism as I and you understand it. And they really l- don't like me. I'm called a conservative and they're, and they're liberal or leftist. Does that bother you? It only bothers me because it means that, that, that they won't get to read my Torah commentary or they won't get to hear a speech that I have to give which could help their marriage or their kids. That's, it doesn't bother me for me. I, I am impervious to hatred. It, it, uh, it's a gift from God. <coughs> also, I get an immense amount of love. By the way, I have a, I have a sheet on that. Prager Theory number 4273. <laughs> You'll love it. Okay. You, you like you like the other. You'll, you really will love it. If you let compliments go to your head, you will let insults go to your heart. So That's you, such a good one. You can't let either happen. And I don't. Because sometimes the you can compl- have a lot of people love you, but uh, you're only focused on the person that hates you. That's right. Well, that means then that the compliments went to your head. Right. right. If the compliments don't go to your head, the insults won't go to your heart. It, it just you, it you can't so just sense. choose yeah, one. They, they, they will both affect you. Neither affects me. I'm very touched by the love. Don't, think, don't get me wrong. I mean, but I'm touched by it. It doesn't go to my head. Right. So oh, I'm terrific. Between, there's a difference between being touched and being affected. That's correct. That yeah. is right. So how would you be touched? And so touched means it meant like it's it, meaningful. It, it means something. People, there is not a day in my life if I'm outside of my house that's, that strangers don't come over to me. Okay. Uh, and you, you know, oh, and it's usually, oh, I love you. Oh, thank you. God bless you. This. Can we get a selfie? And and I'm touched by that. Of course, I'm touched by it. It, it. I'm not a machine, but if if ten people stop me in the street and go "f you, Prager," you're 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 disgusting. You, you okay? It, it 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 wouldn't ruin my day. It it would be sad to me, just as the other one. I'm happy about 
it would be sad to me that people have a view of me which is so perverse. But I live with both, huh? But let's say in the other one, uh, if something touches you. How would you? What would you say is the negative of that? Of being affect, like you being affected. Sad. No. How? What would be your ego would get in the way? I'm talking about. Let's say someone. Oh, you mean if it did go to yeah, my head? If someone wanted to take a selfie with you or whatever yeah. it is, you you. No, uh, it, said something it, it's nice so to far me. from going to my head that I can't even imagine. In fact, <laughs> it's funny you should ask because I've actually said because one of the most frequent things that I'm told by people who work with me is I'm not a prima donna. So I, I, I actually think often I would like one day to be a prima donna. I want to know, what does it feel like? Do they love it? Or is it does it make you really happy? I just, I'd like to well, know you, one day. You can day. do it for how, one day. How would you I do don't, it? I can't. I don't know what it's like. No, but I'm it's saying like you asking said if, me to be... You said if you want something, you can make it happen. Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> but it would be such a phony act. Because... I, 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 whenever great things happen, and, and a lot of great things have happened in my life. I mean, I spoke in the Danish parliament, to, you know, a few months ago. It's, it's not a little thing, but I, you know what, you know what is in my mind. I, I've gone a long way since Yeshiva Rambam. <laughs> that's that's all. I still think of Dennis Prager, Yeshiva Rambam. There's always that little voice in me. You're not, right, you're not right. so terrific. You know? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So did you have to work on, on yourself to get to this place uh, where? Not much. Uh, so it came to be naturally. honest, yeah, that, that I've had battles with myself, battle against arrogance or, or thinking I'm, you know, I'm, I'm terrific and that stuff. It, it, it didn't appear. That's why I, I, I'm abnormal in many, many ways. Here's one. Even <laughs> as a kid, I didn't care about meeting famous people. Oh, Dennis, you know, you can meet this this uh, Hollywood star. We we, we have... Uh, and I, 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 and now you're come, meeting, now you get to meet all of them and it doesn't do, I guess. Well, yeah, well, I, but not Hollywood stars. Right. But, but yes, I know what you're saying. <laughs> but you know that uh, I did not meet Donald Trump once when he was president. I could have met him plenty of times. Did you not want to? That's correct. And I was a supporter. And why did you not want to? Because then I can't criticize him. Because it's hard for me to criticize someone Once that I met. Once you meet them? Yes. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's hard for anybody. It, it just, it's just human nature. So I have tried to meet no politicians. <laughs> that makes sense. Not, uh, not because of any uh, disdain for them. They do some very good work. But uh, uh, and, and some do horrible work. Obviously. So you feel like from a distance you that can analyze them. I have to. Them. That's correct. Yes, that's right. But don't you think you'd get a better analysis if you got if you got to know them in no, person? No, I don't think so at all. Because then you see the only it thing I care of... about are their policies, right. not 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 whether they're sweet or nice or not nice. That's that's why when people will tell me, well, tr Trump, uh, he's he's this, he's arrogant, he's he's this, he's bully, he's this. I said, I, I really don't care. I just want to know what he's done for the country. Right. Let but then God, you wouldn't God will measure his personality. I right. have to measure his policies. Right. Then you wouldn't necessarily analyze those people as great or not great because that's not how you're looking at them. Well, that's a very tough question. The great, the great question is, is complex. I do believe I know great people and I, and I believe in my working definition of those four characteristics. But it gets very hard with a public figure because they may be truly, truly flawed as humans and great as leaders. That's King David. Right. That's the perfect example. Right. But you said part of being great is sharing truth. He said we have yeah. five minutes. I just wanted oh, to give you a heads up. Oh, we have five minutes. Okay. Yes, No, I'm yes, saying I, well, not necessarily, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, no. But I, to I, be a good leader, you want to have all those four qualities. That, that's correct. Yes. Yeah. By the way, there's another very important lesson. What else? Yeah. For, for quickly, I know because of the time. Yeah, we have we we have I time. Think, we yeah, just don't we have time. Wanna... We don't want to take your time. What? Yes, <laughs> one second. <laughs> I feel. Oh boy, I theoretically still have to write my column for this week. I might. I was not. actually going to ask very, you that. How I'm do you very... fit in doing talk show and writing? When my book came out, the Deuteronomy <laughs> commentary, I looked at it. And you'd think, oh, I'm ecstatic. Look at it. I finally see it printed in beautiful hardback. I only had one internal reaction. When did I write this? 
I, I can't believe I found the time to do it. I still can't. Uh, anyway, it's just a funny little... Uh, Are you an early riser? No, oh no, I'm a total night person. I oh. go to bed at 2 o'clock. So is that when you get your best work done? I love night? the night. I hate daylight saving time. <laughs> I hate it. It that's depresses me. It depresses you. We're morning people. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. You want, it's a perfect example of we all have a nature. You can't be a night person no matter what. I can't be a morning person no matter what. You don't think someone can break the cycle? Uh, I, I've never heard of anybody doing it. They may do. I do it. Look, I do a morning show. Right. You know, I took a morning show in order to force myself to wake up. And how did that, that go? Was what, well, it's worked out fine, but I get very little sleep. <laughs> right. But, uh, do you function well on little sleep? Yes. That's great. That's because you've got to drive or uh, energy. Uh, it's a gift. I don't, I don't have an explanation. It's a gift. Because I actually wanted to ask you, at the age that you're at, which is 70, 74, yeah. you, you, have, you have the same energy as someone who is very young. I have young. the same energy I did at 25. I know me very well. What uh, do you think that there is? is not, there is no part of me that is less energetic than when I was in my 20s. Oh, that's so inspiring. I'm so happy to hear. You uh, have that's hope. That's right. Oh, <laughs> that's correct. Uh, the why do you think that so is? So I asked, I had a feeling you'd ask it. So I asked. Alan, my producer, Alan, how do you explain my energy? You know me all these years. And he said, I'm not sure it's explicable. He said, part must be genetic, which I believe my parents were very li live in their 80s. And partially, it's you get so much uh, positive feedback for the work you do that you're inspired. And that, there is truth to that. I mean, uh, I'm, I don't feel that I'm, I'm in quicksand, just trying to get out. I, I, you know, between the books and the radio show and PragerU with a billion views. So it's the feedback that, that. Well, not the feedback again, not in the ego sense, but in, you're you're you are ha you're having an effect. Right. It's meaning. You have you're, a life of meaning. It's meaningful yes, that you're correct. influencing. He said right. one yeah. minute. So I want to have time okay, to wrap up. Okay, so with, yes, go ahead, Ida. Well, no, we wrap just want with, with our quotes. That's yes, we always end our, our podcast yes. with a message that you know, either a message that resonates with you, that's powerful, that's impacted your life, or a favorite quote. Something oh, both. for me to, to do? Yeah. Yes. Like, is, there, is there a quote that you love yeah, that resonates Yeah, well, I, I, okay, so uh, just off the top of my head, since it's a spontaneous question. Okay. okay. So this will, uh, uh, I don't want this to depress people at all, but I, I only on it, on, a, answer honestly. My favorite verse uh, in the Tanakh is... Ohave Hashem Sin Ura. Those of you who love God must, it's a command. Sin Ura is a command form. You must hate evil. If you don't hate evil, you don't love God. I think that that's it's one of the reasons I'm in love with, with the Torah and with the Tanakh and with Judaism. It hates evil. So that, that's a big one. And, and then there's one that I have made up. When people call me up, which they often do, so Dennis, we just had a child. What do you recommend as, to us as parents, new parents? I say, here's my recommendation to remember this. Self-control is infinitely more important than self-esteem. That's how you should raise your child. Can Don't you worry elaborate? about their self-esteem. Worry about their self-control. I feel like that yeah, one can, is... can you elaborate on that? Yes. Self-control. Yes. That's is, yeah. Self-control is the Resistance. key to all good in life. Again, one of my theories, difference between a religious education and a secular education in America. In, a, in religious, this is, I mean, truly religious, Jewish or truly religious Christian school, you learn that the greatest battle in your life is with you. In secular schools, you believe that your greatest battle in life is with America. Big difference. One last thing, since we're in the month of Adar, and Adar is all about joy, what's one thing we can start doing 
immediately that's easy and attainable that can help us become more joyful in our day-to-day -day life? Well, by far, the key to happiness is gratitude. You, if you're not grateful, you can't be happy. Not only that, if you're not grateful, you can't be good. Gratitude is the mother of goodness and happiness. What so are you if, grateful if, for? If, huh? And we want to know what you're grateful for today. Oh, you, you don't share. have enough time. <laughs> oh, uh, you, I, I walk around every day pinching myself at how lucky I am. How, and I, I can't believe for my health, for my wife, for my children, for my friends, for my work, for, for, for my, all my, the loves of my life. I love music. I mean, it, it's, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a gratitude ball. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 so that's, if you can't make a serious list of things you're grateful for, you, you can't have joy. Mm -hmm. The other is start acting joyful. Because my, my, the thing that I've said that may have influenced more people than any one other thing, you have a moral obligation to act happy. Right. You can't right. inflict your bad moods on others. Right. Well, that's inspiring. You're Thank inspiring. You. It, was, it just was a joy. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad. What a compliment. I'm glad Thank that you. brought you joy because that brought us joy. Oh, good. Well, I, you let me know. I'll, I'll publicize this. Thank you. I would love that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank and you. And we, we can't wait to share your wisdom with our listeners. Well, you did today, hopefully. Oh, you mean getting this out there? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we have, we have, Let me know. All, yeah. That's great. Yeah, we have yeah, a diverse, yeah. very diverse That you listeners. came, one from Miami, one from New York. I'm touched. I really am. Well, we're touched that you have us here, so that you have us on your Bruch, show. Yes. Bruchot it's a blessing. Tiena. May you be blessed. <laughs> you, you are thank blessed. You. Thank you. Amen. And you too, may you be blessed in your life. Continued blessings. Thank you. And your list of gratitude should just keep growing. Amen.